You must be friends with Miss Spider. She told me you were going to come by. I'm David Kirk. I've known Miss Spider ever since she was little Miss Spider. Come on up. Let's go inside my treehouse where I come up with Miss Spider stories. I've got lots of things to share with you. <laughs> Miss Spider and all her sunny patch friends started out right here. Miss Spider was here earlier. Maybe she's hiding. You can help me find her by looking all around the treehouse. You know, I know she's around here somewhere. <laughs> Maybe if I play with her favorite toys, that'll bring her out. This is one of Miss Spider's very favorites. I think it reminds her of home. This is the kind of toy I played with when I was a little boy. This is one of Miss Spider's friends from England. This is one I made myself. I started making toys when I was a little boy. When I got older, I learned to paint and work with wood, and then I got very good at making toys. Here's one I made. This is a sneaking baby alligator. And this one is from around the same time, and it's a, it's a robot. After I finished art school, I spent a year in England thinking I could be a painter. But then when I came back from England, decided it would be more fun to be a toy maker. This is one of the first toys I ever made. He's a bank. He loves to eat coins. Here's a guy I made about 20 years ago. He's a pixie robot. This was the first mechanical robot that I made as a toy maker. My first love for toys as a child was my toy robots and I wanted to make something that was along the lines of my other pull toys but was um, mechanical and robot -y and a little scary. So I made this robot, this one's called the Brownie and he has chopping teeth and a long pointed nose and his eyes blink, his little feet tap and his arms move up and down. He walks like he's coming to get you. After a few years of making these toys, a man called Nicholas Calloway called me up and wanted to know if I'd like to write a children's book. He saw the pictures on the boxes of my toys and thought that I would make a good children's book author. And at the time I was thinking that that would be a good job for me and I was already working on the first Miss Spider book. And I took it into his office and he decided he'd like to publish it. Do you notice what these toys have in common? They all have big eyes and bright colors. They all look like they're friends of Miss Spider. It's true, they're a bit buggy. Maybe Miss Spider's playing with the robots. I know we'll find her up here. <laughs> Did you hear that? Maybe this way. Nope, Miss Spider's still hiding. You know, a lot of kids ask me why I'm so fond of insects. And I started being fond of insects a long time ago when I was maybe five, six. My school had a wonderful ditch behind it. It was full of praying mantises. And I'd pick them up and I'd take them home in paper bags and, and I'd play with them for a while and then I'd let them go. Sometimes I'd hide them in my clothes and I'd get them into church with me. My parents weren't very happy about that. I still haven't seen Miss Spider. I have one more idea. She loves to hide in a spout. Mm, nobody. Wait a minute. 
I know where Miss Spider's hiding. I think she swung out to my magic forest. It's a wonderful place for bugs to play. And people too. Do you want to see it? We're here in the magic forest. My daughter Primrose has come to help us find Miss Spider. Come on. Miss Spider started out as something to amuse my daughter when I thought about doing a children's book for the first time. Is she in there? No. Oh, I don't see her. <laughs> Uh-oh. Let's go look up back this way. Any kind of bug she could get her hands on, she'd play with. From the time she was tiny, she could pick up caterpillars and carry them around with her all day without harming them. And she would pick up praying mantises. Think she's under the log? No. You'd have to encourage her not to pick up spiders and ants and the bugs that would bite her. But she was always kind to bugs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Nope. I thought it would be nice to do something that would reward her enthusiasm, and so I thought of Miss Spider. Okay, let's go this way. I think Miss Spider might be in this log. Miss Spider is an Arachne vulgaris floravora, which in Latin means big flower eating spider. Oh, do you think she's under here? Nope. No oh, Miss Spider. I guess I'll have to pick them up. Okay, let's go this way. And I made her a flower-eating spider because partly I didn't think uh, a real spider's diet would be something that would be very appealing in a children's book. And since I wanted to get across the point that everybody should be nice to each other, probably it wouldn't have been a good idea to have her eat her friends. Is, Is Miss Spider over here? Nope. No Miss Spider? No Miss Spider. Miss Spider's dietary habits were influenced by her adopted mother, Betty, who is a nice green beetle. And since Betty wasn't inclined to eat other bugs, she taught Miss Spider the same type of diet. And Miss Spider's favorite foods are calendula flowers and marigolds, which she grows fresh in her garden. We've been all through the magic forest and I still can't find Miss Spider. She must still be at the tree house, but I think I have an idea. Hmm. She doesn't seem to be in this one. Not in this one either. Ah, uh, I know. Here she is. I'm David Kirk. Miss Spider and I thank you for coming by our treehouse. I hope you come again soon. Bye. Sunny path, from Teddy Puddles, sunny path, to Dribbly Dell.